Here's one case for why Android is better than iPhone. Now, before heaps of fanboys from both directions start yelling in the comments, chill. This video isn't about which one's superior. As tech enthusiasts, regardless of where you stand, I think it's important to appreciate devices for what they are more than hate them for what they're not. That being said, while I tend to lean on Apple on a daily basis for my YouTube work, there's something Android has absolutely cornered, and it has a lot to do with these. Let's talk about it. Apple is a bastion that starts controversial trends in the industry. Thank them for the death of the headphone jack, chargers no longer being included in the box, and now that iPhone 14s here in the US are eSIM only, physical SIM cards might be on their way out as well. But it's not to say Android manufacturers are in the clear. Some of the most prominent players have also done their part, steering the market in ways that were initially hard for the consumer to get behind. For example, take Samsung. They're one of Apple's biggest counterparts and have spent generations experimenting with weird form factors. Some were merely a fad, others proved to be popular enough to develop for the mainstream, and the absolute icons became the norm. The most noteworthy, is the big boy, the Galaxy Note. We've covered the history of it here on Denki Channel in the past, but that spawned a trend of girthy phones that even Apple themselves couldn't ignore. But if I'm being real, I miss the good old days of smaller phones that you could hold in one hand and with less pocket bulge. Now, as luck would have it, in the year of our Lord 2022, small is back. And we didn't even have to fold a rectangle and have to get it. Say hello to the Sony Xperia 5 Mark IV and the Asus Zenfone 9. Where Apple decided it was end of the road for the mini iPhone, these two devices show that it's still possible to make a flagship with all of the bells and whistles of a mainstream contender, but for ants. The similarities between the Xperia and the Zenfone don't just stop at their size. Both of them run the flagship level Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 SoC with impressive CPU slash GPU performance and power efficiency in tow. They also have eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, 1080p class OLED screens running at 120 hertz, lightly enhanced builds of Android 12, and even headphone jacks. But what makes these phones special is what they do differently. And I mean between each other and the rest of the boring rectangles out there. Asus's approach with the Zenfone 9 is pretty straightforward. Think about it like this. They already design incredibly nice hardware in other product categories. And someone high up used their noggin and figured, wow, we should use our unique product ID on our newest phone. I don't know why it took Asus like four years to figure this out, but the result looks cool as heck. This Zenfone is one of the best looking, nicest phones to hold in 2022. There's some Something about these honking big camera lenses. And they're surrounded by this plastic back with a grippy matte finish and low key branding. I do like it in this black color that Asus provided with our tester. But if it were my money, the red's where it's at. Best of all, despite it being a more subdued baby brother to the ROG Phone 6 and 6 Pro, I don't feel like the Zen Phone 9 is much of a compromise. Save for the gratuitous amounts of cooling, RAM, battery capacity, and of course, screen size. The core hardware driving everything is the same, which is impressive considering the Zen phone's size and price at a very nice $700. Some other key observations in the time I spent with this phone, the camera could use more work, though the gimbal-like stabilization for video recording is better than I would have expected for a gimmick, and the speakers sound amazing for being on a phone. In pandemic, its economy has been in weird limbo. The lack of distortion is surprising, though probably at the cost of some volume on the top end. Not my words, but the Zenfone 9 is probably the sleeper hit of 2022. It's not gonna blow the roof off of the mobile market, especially here in the States. But if Asus are really trying to make a bigger impression here, I'd like to think this is a step in the right direction. Though sometimes mainstream appeal is not the goal, as is the case with the Xperia 5 Mark IV. 
When Austin Evans and I talked about the Xperia 5 Mark III over on the This Is channel a few years ago, the hot takeaway at the time was that gimmicks came at a cost of polish and refinement that you'd normally find from mainstream players. And let me tell you, the Sony fanboys didn't take too kindly to it. Also a common theme for channels owned by Austin Evans and Overclock Media. But in the week that I've spent with the Xperia 5 Mark IV, I think I'm starting to come around a bit. Especially after talking to some peeps over at Sony, they understand more than anyone that going after Apple and Samsung is a huge undertaking that's somewhat of a losing battle. So put simply, they're content. And that shifted my perspective on the Xperia 5 entirely. You don't have to be a YouTuber to see that the creator and influencer markets are growing bigger and bigger by the day. And many of the people in the industry, like myself, are already using Sony cameras and gaming hardware to make stuff. So it makes a bit of sense that they want to cater to this audience with a phone that can essentially sub in for their big boy mirrorless cameras in a meaningful way. It starts with simple things like a physical shutter button on the side and the tall 21 by 9 aspect ratio that makes this phone wicked nice to hold and to watch anamorphic content on. And then from here, it just gets way too in the weeds. Gonna be nerdy for a second. One thing I really appreciate is the consistent image quality between the three cameras on the back, something that Apple and Samsung always seem to skimp out on. The 12 megapixel sensors across the board are good for 4K 120 hertz video, with color science and processing reminiscent of a proper Sony camera. Where other phones heavily lean on AI to enhance image quality and dynamic range, the Xperia 5 takes a more organic approach, resulting in natural looking images. Use the pre-installed Pro applications to dial in things like frame rate, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, and even rack focus in video. Or if you can't be bothered to do that, it uses the same face tracking tech that Sony implements on cameras like my FX3 to keep things nice and sharp. But the real overachieving feature is being able to use either the cameras on the phone or screen capping directly to Twitch, YouTube, or any RTMP source of your choosing, which can be incredibly useful for IRL streaming on location. And best of all, to support all of this functionality on the go, Sony managed to cram in a 5,000 milliamp hour battery into this tiny phone. And to top it all off, the icing on the cake is that Sony takes huge advantage of the Xperia's USB-C port. You can build this into a neat little vlogging rig with a USB-C external monitor and a Bluetooth selfie grip. The Xperia 5 is not exactly what I'd call cheap. At $999, it will inevitably be dropped in the same conversation as the iPhone 14 Pro and Galaxy S22 Ultra, regardless of perspective. While the mainstream options might provide the polish and well-roundedness most people seek out, I can see where some special individuals, hipsters, might see the value of Xperia's nitty gritty features. And let's be real, these people probably already know what they're getting themselves into. Chime in your thoughts on these tiny phones in the comments below. And otherwise, thanks for watching this episode of Denki Channel. I'll catch y'all later.